Okay, today we are in the book of Esther. Chapter 5 is where we begin in verse 1. And Lord, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Esther 5, verse 1. On the third day, Esther put on her royal robes and stood in the inner court of the palace in front of the king's hall. The king was sitting on his royal throne in the hall, facing the entrance, when maybe Esther wore her royal clothing to remind the king that she was the queen. Because remember, the king usually killed anyone who came into his presence without being invited. 2. When he saw Queen Esther standing in the court, he was pleased with her and held out to her the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther approached and touched the tip of the scepter. Then the king asked, What is it, Queen Esther? What is your request, even up to half the kingdom? It will be given you. And so the prayers of Esther and the other Jews were answered. The king is being very kind to her. 4. If it pleases the king, replied Esther, let the king, together with Haman, come today to a banquet I have prepared for him. There would have been several people in the king's court at this time, and Esther would rather discuss her concern with the king in private, so she invites him and Haman the man that she wanted to talk the king about talk to the king about to a to a private dinner verse 5 it says bring haman at once the king said so that we may do what esther asked so the king and haman went to the banquet esther had prepared esther wanted haman there when she told the king of his plot to kill her and all her people The king would then have to decide on the spot who to believe and who to punish. Verse 6 As they were drinking wine, the king again asked Esther, Now what is your petition? It will be given you. And what is your request? Even up to half the kingdom, it will be granted. Esther replied, My petition and my request is this. If the king regards me, with favor, and if it pleases the king to grant my petition and fulfill my request, let the king and Haman come tomorrow to the banquet. I will prepare for them. Then I will answer the king's question. Well, she evidently backs off and decides to put it off for another day. The king and Haman come to the queen's meal, and when the king asks, What can I do for you? Her answer is, oh, I'd like you and Haman to come to another meal. Well, if nothing else, the king knows that it must be a serious problem. Verse 9, Haman went out that day happy and in high spirits. But when he saw Mordecai at the king's gate and observed that he neither rose nor showed fear in his presence, he was filled with rage against Mordecai. Haman was all puffed up with pride, you know. He was happy until he saw Mordecai, who again would not kneel before him. And then Haman was furious. His pride was hurt. And the fact that plans were in place to kill Mordecai and all of his fellow Jews didn't seem to matter. And as for Mordecai, well, if he didn't bow to Haman before, he sure won't bow to him now that he has plans to murder all the Jews. He sure... He surely isn't going to get any respect from Mordecai now. 10. Nevertheless, Haman restrained himself and went home, calling together his friends and Zeresh his wife. Haman boasted to them about his vast wealth, his many sons, and all the ways the king had honored him and how he had elevated him above all other nobles and officials. And that's not all, Haman added. added, I'm the only person Queen Esther invited to accompany the king to the banquet she gave. 
and she has invited me along with the king tomorrow. But all this gives me no satisfaction as long as I see that Jew Mordecai sitting at the king's gate. Haman was very proud of himself. He told all his friends and his wife how important he was. He was important, all right. And he had wealth and he had power, but he still wasn't happy. See, since he was the most important thing to him, if anything wasn't quite right, it made him unhappy. A self-centered person is an unhappy person. 14. His wife, Zeresh, and all his friends said to him, Have a gallows built, 75 feet high, and ask the king in the morning to have Mordecai hanged on it. Then go with the king to the dinner, and be happy. And this suggestion delighted Haman, and he had the gallows built. His wife and friends should have said, You have a real problem with pride, Haman. Instead, they suggest that he have Mordecai hung in the morning so that he can enjoy his dinner with the king and the queen. And, of course, Haman thought, yeah, that's a great idea. So he had the gallows built. He was getting it, he was getting it all set. And we'll see what happens when we get to verse 1 of chapter 6 next time. Until then, so long, everyone.